When God told humankind to the prophet Samuel to not seek a king other than him, why did he say that? I mean, he's a jealous God. That's a misunderstood phrase. He's a jealous God. Jealous for what? Jealous for our love, for our trust, for us to turn to him and say, I may not know what the day holds, but I know who makes the day. That's a Christian music song. I should probably pay a royalty for that. In fact, I bet YouTube will send me a, a little note to flag. Copyright. When he told the prophet Samuel to go back to the people and say, wait, 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 I'm your king. Lord God, I am the Lord. I took you out of Egypt. I am your king. And Samuel went and said that. The people said, no, 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 but we want a king. We got to have a king. So the Lord looked around Israel and said, okay, here's a tall dude. Go get this guy, Saul. He's tall and good looking. That's what you see. He can't be special because really no human beings are special. I can use anybody for any outcome. And we can now look back at that moment in history where the Jewish people said, yeah, we'd rather not have God be our king. We want human beings to be our king. We don't want a perfect king. We want a flawed king. We don't want a king that's always in it for our good. We want a king who's sometimes going to do some good things for us, but very often is going to be in it for his good. Multiple times throughout history, God has looked around the world and said, I can use anybody. Look at the Lord Jesus walking around with his existing disciples, and they walk past a tax booth. The hated tax collector on behalf of the Romans. You think the IRS is hated by some people? Think about accepting and collecting taxes on behalf of a invading oppressive army of Romans. Lord Jesus walks past that tax booth. He catches the eye of someone named Levi. And he turns to Levi and says, follow me. And Levi did. He was re later renamed Matthew. Now, this is extra biblical, and it's explored in The Chosen, which is an extra biblical program based upon the Bible. But you have to believe there was a lot of discussion among the existing disciples. Are you insane, Jesus? He's a tax collector. And Jesus could look at them and go, and you fished. And you weren't even that good at it. I had to show you how. So human kings versus the Lord saying, I'll take that person and use them for this specific task. Now, in the case of the 12, minus Judas, they received the most magnificent reward impossible to have, which is eternity with the Lord Jesus. Throughout time, the Lord used bad people for his ends. When the Pharisees decided to put the Lord to death, they thought that they were winning. The Lord was using them. No, I need you to do these things, and I need you to do it on this day and in this way and at this time and with these words because I need you to fulfill Scripture, and they didn't even know it. So Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has said something that a lot of people have a problem with. He's suggesting that God intends to use him in a Trump administration. Could that be the case? I think it could because it goes to the heart of human corruption being solved by a, a man who is spiritually corrupt. God can use anybody. The corruption post-election is going to take one of two forms. One of it's going to be top down if the people install Kamala Harris, whether she wins or is installed. If that happens, the corruption will be pervasive across the board, top down, impossible to escape. If President Trump is elected and is allowed to take office, then the corruption will be of a different form. It'll be fighting-based corruption between the two parties. You'll have the Mitch McConnell wing hopefully getting kicked out for good. Hopefully, Ted Cruz wins re-election. McConnell hasn't helped him in that. He's hurt him in that. So the corruption takes a different form. How you deal with that corruption is going to be up to you, but I want to give you a free tool, absolutely free. It's knowledge, which is potential power. My friend Zach Abraham is putting on his first post-election free live webinar to talk about the election, who is either won or is being installed, and what's likely to happen to our economy. At Bulwark Capital Management, where Zach is the chief investment officer, they're obsessed with risk management, which they accomplish by actively managing every portfolio, which can reduce risk and volatility. So in this seminar, this free live seminar, webinar rather, 
Zach is going to explain how Bulwark does, what's coming as they see it in terms of the economy, not facts they can guarantee, but patterns they observe. And you get to attend and ask questions, and it's free. You have to register, though. It's November 21st at 3.30 Pacific. Go register for this at knowyourriskradio.com. That's K-N-O-W, knowyourriskradio.com. Investment advisory services offered through Trek Financial LLC and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. The opinions expressed in this program are for general informational purposes only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security. Any references to performance of securities are thought to be materially accurate and actual performance may differ. Investments involve risk and are not guaranteed. Past performance doesn't guarantee future results. Trek 24308. So RFK Jr. says he's been praying for something since 2005. Since 2005, I spend 30 minutes praying every day when I get out of bed. And I... My prayer is this. I asked God for 19 years to put me in a position where I could end the chronic disease epidemic and bring health back to our children. And in August, God sent me Donald Trump. Now, here we are, Election Day, talking about this. If this were to happen, and RFK Jr. were to do this, and he were to be given this opportunity, would he be doing it? God could work through him for this, and he's as good a tool as anybody, because there's one issue on which RFK Jr. is correct, and has been for many, many years. It's pharma and health. Now, he made the same mistake a ton of people made about the injections early on and the lockdowns early on. He course corrected very quickly, and since then, he's been spot on. So what would the plan be? If God were running health policy, what would it be? I would suggest that it would be a return to the garden. There are foods that are very much like the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, chemically. Try this sometime. If you're someone who eats a lot of sugar, try this. Take two weeks off. Don't eat sugar. And sugar is in many, many things. Sugar is in milk. Sugar is in pasta. My mom says pasta. She's not Italian. I don't know that sounds Italian, but she says pasta. Sugar is in pasta. Take a week, eat meats and vegetables, eat some starches, but don't eat any refined sugars or any simple sugars. Try it for two weeks. Then, and plan this day, plan this day. Go and have all the sugar you want. But when you're eating it, pay attention. You're getting high. You're getting high. Legitimately, you are getting high. When I started a fat loss journey that you might not know about, um, if you're watching this versus listening to it, I weighed almost 400 pounds. And I went through this ritual. I read Tim Ferriss's book about the um, way to use, lose fat through his eyes. And he had some very simple tricks. Don't eat white foods, foods that can be white, but give yourself a cheat day. Cheat day. Well, here's what cheat day meant to me. Six days of good, solid eating, and then purposely waking up and beginning the day down at a place called Des Moines Creek Restaurant, where it was all you could eat, baby. And I'm talking about every pastry. I'd start with eggs and bacon, but then every pastry in every way I could possibly consume it. And then going home and having all the ice cream, and then at night having all the pie and all the stuff, and I more than made up for all the calories I skipped during the week, but man, I felt amazing. I felt hungry all the time on that day. The next day, I went back to the gym and I didn't do those things, but I was stoned. 
We can turn this stuff around with kids by getting them off of the simple sugars. They're an occasional thing. We can turn this obesity crisis around by simply saying to ourselves, what is the food we can eat that is the closest to the way God made it? If it was hard to get, it would be hard to eat. The more refined a food is, the less likely it would be as God designed. The other night, there was this kid, he was eating a pepperoni stick around me. And he said, hey, look, I'm having my protein. He's 14 years old. He's old enough to hear that. I said, no, you're not, man. No, this is meat. No, it's not. Let's read the ingredients together. Meat was the third thing. Sugar was the first and a filler was the second. You're eating a sugar stick with some fat in it. In fact, macrobiotically, it was more fat and sugar than protein. RFK Jr. could do these things with his wisdom or with God's. God would have us drink water instead of soda. He would have us eat fruits from a tree instead of in fruit leather. He would have us eat lean meats and proteins that way, straight from the field or the kill, if you like. Sorry to my vegan daughter. This can be done. RFK Jr. might be the guy God decides to use to do this. In other words, picture the garden and eat that way. Although my Seventh-day Adventist friends will say, you just endorse vegetarianism. Don't! Didn't mean to do that. 